Hello, my friends, and welcome. We have some of the great news coming from the south near to Robotina. Ukraine went on a counterattack towards the Russian forces, liberating more territories. We do not see it on this military map update yet, but we have the confirmation that there were two of the major strikes by Ukrainian army and our gas propelled forward. Let me show you the other military map source. Here we have the Robotina village, and as you can see, Ukraine went forward some of the russian vehicles were burning russia tried to use some of the artillery fire on robotina directly and nearby but ukraine still was successful it means that the most capable russian elite forces the part of Vedeva divisions are unable to secure nova prokopivka from the constant ukrainian attacks it also shows that the ukrainian defense is very flexible the ukrainian army command still wants to go on a counteroffensive actions if the situation on the front lines allow them to do so. The last month Russia conducted a couple of the assaults on the south and also one from Verboba. They have took some of the fields, but it seems like they are running out of the options to break through the Ukrainian defense. By the way, Ukraine wasn't really able to build the defense lines in this region. It makes our defense flexible, but not that robust compared to the Russian defense lines. The downside of it that we need to use more and more resources and forces to feed our defense actively with tanks, Bradleys and basically our soldiers' infantry. But you know I'm quite amazed with today's action of Ukrainian army. We also have the confirmation about it from our soldiers, so indeed it was the successful operation right away in two different directions from Robotina village. This big gray area near to Novoprokopivka shows that the fighting is very intense in this place, so there is still a big question whether Russia is capable to secure Novoprokopivka for them for a very long time. Finally, I think Ukraine will take this village even with lack of resources in ammunition which we currently have. But continue moving forward, I don't think that it's the great idea for Ukrainian army right now. We need firstly to understand the prospects for 2024 and whether we are going to obtain the military support from the United States of America. So for the Russian trolls who were absolutely sure that Russia took initiative, especially in this region, you were wrong. But at the same time, we have the fact of the Russian advancement towards Avdivka town from the southern industrial part of the city, and the fighting is ongoing in the town itself. We even have the confirmation of the Russian forces presented in this part. Let me show them to you. The analysis was done by the Deep State military map source. They even published some of the screenshots from the drone videos that Russian forces are presented, or maybe it's better to say were presented in this place, because those drone images are coming from the Ukrainian drones, FPV drones and the drop drones, which our army uses to fire on the Russian position. Positions. It doesn't mean that Russians are not presented in this place, but the fire from Ukrainian side continues on their positions, so clearly it is the grey zone. Russians are unable to take it fully under control and secure their positions. I would say even more, Russia is unable to move their big forces across this road, because all of this area is monitored by Ukrainian drone units and Russia obviously loses their vehicles if they try to move them forward. That is why they assault mostly with infantry forces. I would say not mostly, but just with infantry forces, soldiers. I've just checked the information that yesterday actually Russia tried to move their tanks and armor vehicles to those positions, but was absolutely demolished. We may check out even the visual confirmation about the Russian failed attack they used T-80, as you can see, T-72, and also some of the armored vehicles, two of them. So using the armored vehicles and tanks at this particular point of the front lines is not a good idea for the Russian Federation, that's why they start to use just infantry forces. However, they are unable to secure the positions just with the infantry forces. They need tanks, but they are unable to send them massively. They fail. This place is called a Tsarsky Hunt, and I do not expect that the Russian army would move forward very fast to the central part of Avdivka town. No, for now it's not possible. Also, the second major attack attempt from the Russian army from Kamenka village 
basically failed because of the very difficult terrain in this place and because Ukraine fires constantly on the Russian positions. Mykovsk 73 also shows us more details. So here is the Russian advancement, the tanks that were demolished, I already showed them to you, and the advancement of the Russian army towards the place, but they are unable to secure the ground in this place. Yes, they were spotted, the gray area expanded, couple of days ago, but still there is the great chance for them to be kicked out by Ukrainian army from this spot. Saying in general, Avdivka became a big trap for the Russian army because they have enormous losses for their regular armed forces. In Bakhmut it was different and let me explain you why. Indeed, Bakhmut was occupied but not by the regular armed forces of the Russian Federation, but by the Wagner army, and they had lots of the prisoners fighting for them, so they forced them to fight on a very difficult directions, so for the regular Russian army it was more or less okay, they do not count those losses. At the same time, the elite part of the Wagner army, the experienced soldiers from Africa, from Syria, they attacked very effectively, causing severe losses also for the Ukrainian side. Yes, Ukraine had less losses in Bakhmut compared to the Russian side still, but not as less as in Avdiivka right now. Their Russian army loses around 10, sometimes up to 12 times more compared to Ukrainian army. It's just crazy. Crazy. In Bakhmut the ratio was 1 to 5, but then Wagner went into the city, the ratio was around 1 to 1, unfortunately for Ukrainian side. But in Avdiivka, I would say it was defending that town, and also it's more important compared to Bakhmut. Now obviously the Russian regular armed forces are fighting in Bakhmut, trying to offense. Sometimes they even take the ground, but I would say that Wagner was much more effective compared to the regular Russian armed forces. The only place where Russia actually has the advantage over Ukrainian side is over here, near to the north, in Kupensk region. They tried to assault to Sinkivka. They understood that it's the wrong direction for their assault because the robust defense of Ukrainian side do not allow them to propel forward. That is why they are now concentrated on advancing from Krahmane village. And today they expanded their bridgehead. So yesterday it was like that and today they propelled forward, taking the part of the road, which is not good for Ukrainian side, obviously, and I would say that Ukraine wasn't ready for this attack from the Russian side, but hopefully we're gonna concentrate the forces to push them back. In the region of Kherson, Russia tried to move with some of their forces, including the best Russian T-90 tanks, but they were demolished. As it was reported, at least two of the tanks of that type were used by the Russian Federation during today's attack, but we have the video confirmation only about a single tank. Let me show it to you. Clearly, it is the T-90M Pro Reef tank. It has the classical turret, as you may see, and it was hit on the back side and later on Ukraine added more with FPV drones just to make sure that this tank will never run again. At the same time Russia tries to secure their tanks against the drone attacks by Ukrainian army. You can see how they mastered the grill Oh, oh, we're gonna speak about this one too. So you see how they cover the tank on the top and on the sides, making it very difficult for the crew to evacuate very fast and properly, I would say. They even put the Contact 1 explosives armor just on the top, lowering this space for the crew to evacuate just in case. And it could be damaged, all of that blocking the way for the soldiers to get out. If we check the similar installation on Israeli-made Merkava tank, you may see that it is more light but still performs its functions and it gives a huge gap for the crew to evacuate. Those struts are not that robust and will not grave the crew inside the tank. The Merkava tank protection was done on the factory, but Russians have the variety of designs and still were not able to make a single one which would fit to every of their tanks. On my personal opinion, I think that this Russian design is the most capable which they have. 
they put the cage not far away from the turret itself and also they put explosives armor on the top which might potentially damage all of those hatches also blocking way for the russian soldiers they also may damage the aiming equipment nearby but still it doesn't make the tank very huge and i would say that it would work for sure however it's unable to protect the turret from the sides very effectively but they have extra armor on the sides too yes and about the russian tank operation from inside they have the automatic reloading system as you can see and what happens after the shot all of the gases are coming into the turret that is why russians very often keep the hatches open even during the battle by the way this feature on the barrel is used in particular to stop the gases coming back into the tank compartment for the russian tanks it seems to be not so effective as for the western made tanks meanwhile we have the new satellite images showing the proofs of the new delivery of the weaponry to the russian federation from the north korea all of the military cargo is going from the najin port to two of the russian big ports located at the far east part of the russian federation and later on all of that stuff is being transported to ukraine using the railroad connection my idea and i know that i cannot prove it that china delivers its weaponry to north korea and later on north korea delivers everything to russia to some of the other news the slovakian prime minister said that ukraine must give up territory to end russian invasion almost the same rhetorics we heard from viktor orban by the way they got the meeting just a couple of days ago maybe that is why fiso the prime minister of slovakia is so brave right now in his statements and also the same rhetorics we might spot from the candidate probably the candidate for the future presidential elections in the united states donald trump well actually they may say everything they want it will not have any sort of the influence on the policy of ukraine according to many of the analytics even if donald trump for example becomes the next president of the united states ukraine will continue the fight with russia even without the military support from the united states sadly to see the populist rhetorics from our allies on the west slovakia provided ukraine with all of the military help needed including the fighter jets but with a power change you can see how the policy of the country might change to the bad way for us at least but i think after all for them too because ukraine is bordering slovakia and our guys are stopping the russian invasion so you should help why are you not helping asking to trade the territories because in the future you'll have to trade your own territory for russia the daily mail publishes a very interesting article about the possible russian attack on the NATO countries they presented this scheme and divided the stages of the russian attacks so the first stage is the cyber attack on france spain turkey italy and other countries of the nato those would provoke a disturbance in the casual life of the europeans plus would create an interference for the satellite signals the second stage is the massive rocket attack on many of the countries too that is what russia is doing now in ukraine by the way by the time i am recording this video russia launched 12 of the tupolev 95 strategic bombers so probably during the morning time they will target ukraine again so the similar stuff they will do with civilian and the military infrastructure of europe but for now i don't think that they have resources for that massive attack on many of the countries probably they would concentrate on some of the small countries only after that russians would go on a ground operations between poland and lithuania through suwalski gap their idea is to get to kaliningrad using the ground way so for sure there will be the fight after that they will try to attack estonia latvia and lithuania from the other directions the russian fleet would establish the control over the northern arctic route cutting this part from the nato after all of that russia would pause checking the reaction of the allies you may say that this scenario isn't real and i hope it isn't but at the same time lithuania and poland will conduct the joint military drills near to Suwalki gap 
very soon. It means that they are getting ready for this possible scenario. And the further escalation, for example, to the Arctic is also possible. Not just Daily Mail says about this stuff, but many of the military analytics, for example, one of them is Fabian Hoffman from the Oslo University. He says that the main mistake of the West that they think that the war in Ukraine would be the similar as the war between Russia and NATO, that Russia would be defeated, but Russia understands that they know that they will lose in the conventional standard war, that is why they want to rise the stakes, at the same time using the conventional weaponry. During the war in Ukraine, Russia learned a very important lesson that Western countries mostly do not want to escalate. It was very hard for Ukraine to obtain any sort of the weaponry from the very beginning we had just javelins and little by little we start to receive weaponry like fighter jets still soviet made and all of this process is very long there is no immediate reaction from the west for the direct threat from the russian federation the sanctions also do not work on a full scale russia is even able to get the military equipment for their army from the western countries via the third countries. So there are tendency from the Western politicians to keep the status quo, to keep Russia somewhere aside, but no, there is no return. Russia already passed this red line and we need the prompt action on the Russian escalation. Because they will constantly rise the stakes, even including the usage of the nukes. As an example, Hoffman describes the Caribbean crisis back in 1962. By that time, the United States of America got 10 times more nukes compared to the Soviet Union, but still was forced to cancel the blockade of Cuba and guaranteed not to assault on the island with unfriendly communist regime. So the main aim for Putin is to threaten the Western countries with a possible escalation towards some of the bordering NATO countries to cause allies to retreat, to have its own influence spread as it was before in the Soviet Union. And something tells me that Western politicians are not ready for the full escalation. But from what we see in Russia, Putin is really preparing Russia to sacrifice even its own. The similar picture we saw then the Nazi Germany erupted. And for those kind of the threats, Russia doesn't necessarily need to restore the full army capability which it lost in Ukraine. They still have nukes, they still have missiles, and they still have aviation and navy. For sure, they're looking for the possible scenario to perform the small limited attack on a neighboring NATO country. As it was explained here, for example, that would automatically rise the stakes and would lead to the go-no-go -no -go decision for the West. That is why I think that our allies should be ready for the worst possible scenario. And again, it seems like they are thinking about it, because Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania are going to build some sort of that defense line near to the border with Belarus and Russia. The good thing that Western weaponry overcomes the Russian-made weaponry, for example, Patriots, were so effective against the Russian hypersonic Kinjal missiles that even China got frustrated about it because their rocket technologies are pretty much the same as the Russian Kinjals. The United States has totally different hypersonic missile project which is not as fast as the Russian one, but I'm sure it will be way more effective. My friends, now don't forget to press your big like to this video, by doing so you help me a lot. And also, if you want to support my job, you may check out some of the links in the video description just below. You may support me on Patreon or just on the sponsorship of this YouTube channel. My friends, thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.